Hi. Thank you for your presence in Quebec. Dr. Mark Bonner, he's a private uh, dentistry in Quebec, in Canada. He received his diploma at the University of Montreal. He has a school, uh, International Institute of Periodontology. He published uh, also, also on the um, role of protozoan in periodontal disease. And he used a microscope, face contrast microscope, to explain and prevent periodontal disease, which he considers a um, neglected disease, protozoan disease. Dr. Mark Bonner, directly from Canada. He's going to talk uh, how you can uh, cure periodontal disease rapidly before implants. Thank you very much speaking with you. Uh, 30 minutes to uh, do implants in a normal periodontal. What we see mostly in implantology is it's like periodontology, there's not many children having periodontal disease, so why is it? If I go back to um, biology, elemental biology, we can see that uh, first thing we see, chapter 1 in 1914, would be about amoeba. This would be the first chapter. And uh, then thereafter, there will be... Uh, little uh, later chapter that would be bacteria and then uh, this is because we uh, wake up to uh, macroscopy and then we find uh, penicillium which would be part of penicillin we know later so this first chapter about amoeba very surprisingly see how we can see the amoeba so this is knowledge some kind of knowledge we tend to forget uh, also, good reference would be element, in elementary biology would be the cell, 1931. We have a microscope. So now we have this microscope we can use in um, dental uh, offices, which is a uh, necessary um, apparatus we need, this microscope, to show the patient what's in his uh, periodontal sulcus. We have to show this to the patient. So before you do some implants, we suggest to cure periodontal disease. So if we look at the definition of periodontitis, we'll see first is uh, microbe dysbiosis, microbe dysbiosis, and then it's also inflammatory process. Now what we have to do is treat uh, this dysbiosis and treat this inflammation. So get rid of microbe, dysbiotic microbe, and get rid of inflammatory process would be the first thing if you want to cure this periodontal disease before we want to put some implants in the mouth. So treat this. <clears throat> you can cure the patient. Now first is important thing is to diagnose and then treat. So what we have to diagnose, what is microbiotic in the sulcus, periodontal sulcus, and what is the inflammation process within this uh, periodontal disease. So stop, try to stop removing calculus. Calculus is not the cause of the disease. This is a consequence. So first, diagnose microbial, diagnose what are inflammatory cell. So what we propose as a sequential model for periodontal disease and periimplantitis is look at uh, first, if you have uh, health, health is a uh, narrow sulcus, uh, nice non-motile bacteria and epithelial cell. So this is what we find everywhere in health. Now for many reasons, too many, too much plaque or 
whether uh, is the problem with plaque, uh, can be systemic, you, or you have trauma, then you get to gingivitis. So gingivitis, you find motile bacteria and leukocyte inflammatory cells. So here are uh, neutrophil. And then you get antimoeba gingivitis uh, and other parasites within the gingivitis. Then you get periodontal disease. So in periodontal disease, we find leukocyte, mostly neutrophil, many ghost cells, and we find amoeba. Amoeba, uh, pathogen amoeba that will uh, produce some collagenase and destroy tissue uh, around the teeth. So we have to look at all this process and see how we can stop before gingivitis or before periodontal disease. So this is uh, what we can do today. Definitively, this is a periodontal disease. So if you look at periodontitis, we find patients with age, cardiac disease, pneumonia, diabetes, and comorbidity. Curiously, coronavirus has the same distrib distribution, so there's high correlation between those two. So is, is there any question we could ask ourselves? Um, let's see about risk factor. Risk factor is most, most uh, prominent, most uh, efficient one is age. Then you have heavy smoker, then you have moderate smoker, diabetes, and male. And see also for bacteria. Bacteria is part of it, but it's two or three times more risk factor. But if you look at antimoeba gingivalis pathogen, you'll see it's about 100% of periodontal disease and mostly periimplantitis. So how do we see those parasites? So those trophozoite we can find in the normal in the um, in the diseased uh, sulcus periodontal sulcus so at 100 magnification see how many of those amoeba we can find more more than uh, 50 or 60 of them in one millimeter by one millimeter uh, plaque uh, from the sulcus so they are very very present and it is easy to find them if you go then to 1000 magnification face contrast microscope with oil uh, you can see the amoeba so it, it is exactly like uh, the amoeba we find in the liver, in the dis li liver disease. So uh, this is the same kind of amoeba, except they don't do cysts, but they can do the same problem. So this is half, half of the population. Now, is antemoeba gingivalis a pathogen? Of course, we've been uh, uh, writing about this, reassessing the role of antemoeba gingivalis in periodontitis. Uh, we know this is mostly a pathogen, and it's been described as uh, causing oral inflammation and tissue destruction lately from uh, some studies in uh, Germany. So. Really, it is a pathogen, so we have to uh, remove this from the periodontal sulcus or periimplantitis sulcus. So now uh, we know that uh, viruses can be inside the parasite. Virus can be inside antemoeba. See this um, study by uh, Didier Raoult, Professor Didier Raoult, who show the viruses from the amoeba, some amoeba, this is mimivirus, but it could be the same for other. See how it can replicate and explode within the environment around the amoeba. So amoeba could be uh, something important in those uh, diseases because it can multiply within the amoeba. So it, it is pathogen amoeba. So what do we do if we want to do implants? So our suggestion would be, uh, as we find about 100% amoeba within the periodontal disease, before implant, we suggest rapid cure. So if you want to have rapid cure of periodontal disease before implant, we suggest you give metronidazole for seven days then use a tooth brushing with H2O2, 3% for one month, and apply Torrance powder two times a day. Then in one month, uh, most your patient and 
almost the disease will be gone. Of course, there'll be some calculus to remove and some teaching uh, to the patient to have perfect hygiene, but it would be a rapid uh, cure of illness disease this way. So if you want to treat patient on the long term, uh, it could be uh, similar, but first would be uh, remove pathogen microbes. So this is the first thing we can do, not remove calculus. You just remove pathogen microbes, including bacteria, uh, including uh, parasite if you have, including fungi if you have. Now, this is the first thing to do. Now, after you can teach the patient, this is a method, you can teach patient for uh, disinfection, what they have to do every day uh, during this uh, normally one year of treatment. And you have to educate patient how they get this disease from gingivitis to periodontal disease, how they get parasite from the water, from uh, everywhere in their environment. So you have to teach them not to have gingivitis. So if you want to train, most important is training patient to disinfection. There is one way we can um, do this with patient. It's not very complicated. So most important thing is training, training, and training to this disinfection. So it takes a big sink and big mirror in the dental office somewhere, and you teach your patient. It takes 15 to 20 minutes at the sink, and you do this every month, and you do this 10 times, 10 months long. So you ask your patient to do dental floss for his mouth, complete mouth, and then you ask, use a bass modified technique for brushing with H2O2, 1%, and then you ask patient to apply disinfectant uh, cream if needed. So this is 15 to 20 minute teaching on the sink in the and the dental office with the patient. So doing this every month, every month, every month, at the end of year, patient will be very, very good, just like high dental hygienist. So if you want to cure rapidly, uh, you know how to do disinfection. You can see this uh, on uh, YouTube. You can look at YouTube, Mark Bonner, you can find this. So if you want this rapid cure, you give metronidazole, which will uh, stop most periodontal disease because of the parasite, remove, removing the parasite. Then use uh, a hydrogen peroxide for uh, one month, three percent. So this is easy to find everywhere uh, in the pharmacy. And then uh, you do the Torrance powder. You can do this at, uh, in the, um, at home or as laboratory, and it's just six part of baking soda and one part of uh, normal salt. So you apply this after brushing, you just apply it on the gum line for uh, two times a day. Now, treating on the long term, you can cure the patient, uh, it, but you have to have perfect hygiene, uh, get rid of the um, uh, infection from uh, a closed um, area, and uh, after that you remove calculus. So first four months will be disinfection. So first four months, remove the microbe, you do disinfection, patient does his uh, brushing and disinfectant in, at home, and then from the fifth month, as you got rid of all the microbe, all the pathogen microbe, you see this on the microscope, then you can remove calculus. So it becomes easy. Uh, sulcus is a little is l less uh, deep, and you can uh, really clean and remove calculus very easily at that time. And then you need, at nine months, you need some um, uh, healing time, so you get uh, closing all the pockets. So if we 
see with uh, what was proposed with Van Dyke, Dr. Van Dyke, is he says inflammation is uh, losing, uh, you, with inflammation you lose uh, fiber, so, and you can, you have deeper pockets, so uh, what do we do? We have to stop inflammation, so we can use the microscope to stop inflammation. Same thing would be uh, like uh, modulate uh, heart response and use some tool to uh, to stop this, so we can do this with the microscope. We can stop dysbiosis and inflammatory cells. And Dr. Van Dyke would say this would uh, we don't understand why there there must be something uh, we don't know, and we should do something, but uh, we don't understand the problem for. Uh, times so stop looking for stop searching just do something just remove those bacteria and remove those parasites so see how those parasites do in the uh, in the periodontal disease so this is impossible to keep those uh, within the disease see all the amoeba one two three four five amoeba plenty of neutrophil plenty of inflammation, one amoeba here in the center, a lot of uh, white cell, uh, ghost cell that lost their nucleus from the amoeba. So we have to get rid of all this. And you know, see that many amoeba and that many neutrophil. Of course, there are also some bacteria. You can see mostly the uh, spirochetes, uh, but most of it is inflammatory cell and parasite. So get rid of this. This is only stage two, 30 year uh, young patient. So it's not normal. See how the amoeba can uh, tr go everywhere as trufusite and eat cells. So here again, some vibrio, some spirochete. Those are uh, red uh, uh, complex of Sokransky, but mostly white cell. Here is a little minute amoeba on top of those two. So this is very characteristic of periodontal disease. So see how the amoeba is doing with the pseudopod. Here, a minute baby one on top, double uh, pseudopod here, big amoeba. This is periodontal disease. Some spirochy, of course and always uh, some pus, those are neutrophil active, uh, neutrophil. So it's impossible to keep this and put implants just beside a tooth with, which has this kind of uh, problem. So it is important to understand that uh, uh, protos are, are really present during uh, this uh, periodontal inflammation and Entemoeba gingivalis is uh, nourishing from hell, uh, so cell uh, from the house and this is uh, infection with higher cytokine inflammatory and also uh, um, breaking the epithelial wall, invading the epithelial wall and destroying the tissue, just similar to Antemoeba histolytica. So this uh, protozoan, uh, his um, motor, potential, potential motor of um, destructive periodontitis. So it has uh, to be taken care into the um, pa um, um, pathogenicity of the periodontal disease. Uh, here is the article from uh, Bao and Schaeffer in 2020 showing amoeba within the epithelial uh, cells uh, layer. So it is, uh, we cannot ignore this uh, invasion from uh, protozoan um, amoeba. So uh, in conclusion, we can say it has a uh, Antemoeba gingivalis has a potential of virulence potential. And dentists uh, should be uh, safe not leaving any of those in, within the periodontal tissue, inflamed tissue. It should be uh, out of the sulcus if you want to cure uh, the patient.
Now, about risk factor, you may think uh, stress, uh, smoking, genetic or pophyromonas is important. Uh, of course, but working with stress, smoking and gene is much difficult and you have no real power. Uh, the best way would be to work somewhere where you have power. So this would be uh, removing gingivitis or preventing gingivitis so you don't have periodontal disease. And risk factor for uh, parasite is 600 to uh, 9,800 uh, times. Uh, gingivitis would be 150 uh, times um, risk factor compared to stress or gene it is very uh, more uh, efficient to work uh, against gingivitis and removing those uh, parasites gives you a lot more power to cure the disease and um, then curing the disease, do implants afterward when the patient is cured. So now there's still a second parasite into this uh, periodontal disease. About 30% of case has been shown uh, from uh, French uh, research in Nancy. So you see those trichomonas, we know they are there, but image and film is very uh, important to uh, understand the disease. See how impressive those uh, trichomonas tenax with the flagella, four flagella, membrane, outer membrane, and see how they are doing. And knowing those are pathogen was shown in 2015 by our Brazilian colleagues. Uh, this is a pathogen too. So this may be very active in aggressive type of periodontal disease. So uh, make sure you remove those um, trichomonas uh, tenax, this uh, second infection in about, you know, almost one third of the case. So now to do, to do all this, you need a tool. The, the right tool actually would be this um, Leica microscope, uh, uh, face contrast microscope with Wi-Fi and everything needed to share. Now see how our friend uh, use our technique, uh, periodontal healing protocol, and see how they have good uh, pocket closure. It's about on five of those cases of a friend uh, in Paris. See, uh, there's 99.7% pocket closure after our method of treatment, which is about one year and a little more, and see how bleeding points are gone. Uh, it's 100% um, bleeding is, uh, is gone, so uh, we encourage that is to do this technique, cure the patient, and then you can uh, go on with implantology in a, a neat um, area. So remember, with the microscope, you can also see the bacteria. So uh, all this periodontal disease is a system. It's a, 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 a ecosystem. So you have the green complex, you have the orange complex, red complex. All this we can see on the microscope. We can see uh, on the in periodontitis, uh, Neisseria, Vionella, Garnerella, and all those, uh, the parasite, amoeba, trichomonas. So to cure the disease, just remove all those orange, red, and uh, parasite, as well as actinomyces uh, formation. Go, just go back to green complex and your patient is cured. So see some patients, they, they really, they don't know what to do. They had, uh, they had uh, plenty of treatment for years and years. They had uh, lost their front teeth. They have implant. They have pre-implantitis. See how uh, we can show those patients, even after 20 years of treatment, still the same microbiota with uh, uh, a parasite, Antemoeba gingivalis, uh, pus, white cell, uh, vibrios, and um, uh, spirochete of the red complex. So this is uh, impossible to, to keep if you want to have uh, good um, periodontal uh, tissue and good uh, pre-implantitis tissue. So remove those amoeba. 
<coughs> this is not surprising seeing patients like those say, hey, what happened to my teeth? My teeth are longer. You see the pus on the lingual side of the front teeth on one side so this is clearly infection see you have a seven eight uh, nine millimeter pocket you have this uh, horizontal bone loss so now in this case this is more difficult because you can't have that bone growing by itself curing the disease so you may finish like unesthetic uh, things so in those cases, we have to uh, this was what I, we did at the time we put some implants little bridge with pink uh, porcelain on top and then but see how the microbiote is after uh, healing so it's just dots in line just cocaine filament and epithelial cell no uh, white cell so see how we got lots of bone after that see how nice tissue are even uh, 17 years after but see how Pocket closure would be 99% compared to original and uh, one pocket left, so a four millimeter. So it's 99% curing of the disease. So you have to diagnose, you have to disinfect, and you have to treat, but use the microscope to help you doing all those. You make sure uh, the biofilm, the microbiota is nice and uh, healthy. So this is very easy. And you can learn from uh, conferences or our book, To Kiss or Not To Kiss, A Cure For Gum Disease. You can find it everywhere. So we uh, encourage you to uh, uh, learn how to heal periodontal disease. So you can find our conferences on uh, parodontit.com or in English you can find on uh, periodheal.com periodheal.com you can find English um, version of our uh, seminar how to heal uh, periodontal disease so thank you very much for uh, having you uh, listening to our, this uh, little presentation on how to prepare patients for implants thank you very much Thank you for uh, your question. Uh, of course, it is very important to look for uh, the microbiota of uh, the patient on the different teeth to see what is going on into the sulcus. So the tool for this is a microscope. It is a phase contrast microscope. And uh, we suggest you have uh, magnifi magnification, 100 magnification. This is the one uh, used to uh, find uh, most of the parasite, white cell, uh, make difference between uh, epithelial cells and parasites. You can see them uh, very widely. And then uh, we recommend you use 1000 magnification. 400 is not enough to really confirm uh, for the parasite and confirm the white cell and have nice uh, images. So if you use 1000 magnification with the uh, PH3 annular ring on the face contrast, now you can have uh, really nice images uh, um, on the microscope and you can confirm parasite uh, looking at the nucleus which is a four micron large uh, diameter nucleus so you can make the difference between macrophage and uh, parasite antamoeba uh, gingivalis so this uh, Microscope we, com we re actually recommend is Leica DM750, which is very uh, nice. It's a reasonable cost, and you have very clear images. And this uh, new microscope, you can have uh, Wi-Fi, you can uh, save images and video on video uh, film, on video SD card, or send it to your uh, iPhone, iPad, or computer. So this is very nice, excellent uh, microscope to do this. Thank you.